Ah, that age-old question, which came first, the original or the original, or the original, or the original, or... Hi, and welcome to Hip Hop History. I'm your host, DJ Piracy. Now today we're going to be talking about a very influential rap record that not only helped birth a whole subgenre of music, but helped solidify one of the most influential and impactful cities on the map of hip hop. Now a lot of you are already familiar with this record, and those of you who aren't are probably familiar with some of the things that came from it. Well, all of those songs and quite a few more came from this record right here. DJ Jimmy's Where They At. We got New Orleans in the house tonight, tonight. Originally released in 1992 on Solon Records, despite having DJ Jimmy's name being prominent on the label, it was actually a collaborative effort with local songwriter and performer Dion Norman, aka Devious, along with another DJ named Mello Fella. The song took off quickly, selling over 500,000 copies in six weeks, and officially put New Orleans' rap scene in a nationwide spotlight. The success led to a lot of duplication efforts by other artists. Some of the replies even spawned replies of their own. For example, Lil Elt's Get the Gat was parodied in Juicy's B.E.B. Get the Gat was based on MCE's Lick the Cat, which was another response to where they at. Though it wasn't a single until 1993, it was on the DJ Jimmy album It's Jimmy, which came out in June of 1992. So, P.E.B. was a reply to a reply that was a reply to the original. Now, if that's not confusing enough, this isn't the original version of DJ Jimmy's song. This is. And that's not the original version of Where They At. This is. MCT Tucker and DJ Irv released Where They At on Charlotte Records in 1991, the year before DJ Jimmy's original version. Technically, it's not even the first release, but that's a whole nother story. DJ Jimmy's version says the original, but this record came out in January of 1992 on Solon Records. It had four tracks, the club, radio, and instrumental versions of the remix, and the reply by MCE. After the record broke gold, Selecto Hits picked it up, added an extended version, single version, removed one of the samples, and then distributed it through their sub-label, Avenue Distribution. Although Tucker was first to market, Jimmy's record was more successful. There are many differences between the two records on both the music side and the business side, so let's start by asking Devious, the producer, about what separates the artists. So basically, I just utilize my connections to try to help Jimmy and use my songwriting skills to help organize him. And that is what separated him from T. Tucker, the fact that he had a national campaign, he had a production team behind him and his record was more organized than Tucker's. Tucker's record was basically just two trigger mans on the turntables and Irv, DJ IRV out the seven ward, rest in peace my homie. He was just going back and forth on the record. Two trigger mans? What the heck is that I hear you asking right now? Well, in 1986 the Showboys released a song called Drag Rap. It failed to garner much of a buzz, but it would live on to become one of the most frequently sampled records in rap, especially by Memphis and New Orleans. So basically all that was necessary to make the instrumental for T. Tucker's version was to juggle sections of this record while he would do a type of call response rap to the crowd. This actually wasn't an uncommon idea, and some nights a DJ might just keep juggling one record a while while different rappers took turns rhyming over it live. My name is Steve Tucker, I'm a bad motherfucker. I come to go down by myself. Mind of my shit and don't need no help. If you know the good of shit, I will fuck your mouth. Go, how to go, go, how to go, go. I say now, DJ Jimmy's Where They At was a lot more polished than T. Tucker's version. In addition to the Trigger Man bass, it incorporates quite a few more samples that give it a very different overall sound and feel. The main bass line running through it is from Freshco and Miz's Ain't You Freshco, released in 1990. 
Another bass guitar sample that was used come from average white bands, person to person. The call portion of the hook is Who's the Man, Who's the man by the KGs. And of course, the response portion of the hook comes from Boogie Down Productions, Jimmy. Double Barrel by Dave and Ansel Collins is used to make one of the ad-libs that you hear and the Magnificent. And the yeah, yeah, yeah comes from Earth, Wind & Fire's Devotion, live version. And that's not all the samples used in the song, but those are the samples which give the song its main identity. So to make the instrumental for DJ Jimmy's version, all we gotta do is start out with the Trigger Man. Then we add our bass. Calls and responses. So now that we know what makes both of these records up musically, one might ask the question, did Jimmy just rip off Tucker's record and polish it a little bit better? Well, the short answer is no, but maybe Devious should tell it. What you get for being polite, cause Urban Hedlund took my beat and him and Tucker was on the radio. What happened with DJ Jimmy really didn't have a lot to do with T. Tucker. Basically, you gotta go back before that to really get a good understanding of what happened. So you had the Ninja Crew, that was the first rap group in New Orleans to make music on a national label. And that consisted of Gregory D, Sporty T, DJ Baby T, DJ Kennedy. And basically the Ninja Crew made record We Destroy and Baby T Rock. And then a little while after they, they split. And that's when me and Baby T got together and we made Street Life. So you had Gregory D get with Manny Fresh and they made Buck Jump Time. So Bug Jump Time and Street Life were two of your earlier records. So after that, uh, me and Baby T made an album. We got a deal, it did well. And after that, you know, you start to see the evolution of real rap records. They had Bust Down, Tim Smooth, MC Thick, Ice Mike, Full Pack, 3-9 Posse, etc. Making real rap records. I was working on a new solo album with a new DJ named Mellow Fellow and with Sice on the beats. And after we finished the album, the company that we were connected with in New Orleans, they asked me to make a dance record. And I said no, because the dance record didn't go with the subject matter that was on the new album that me and Sice and Mellow Fellow had just finished. Mellow Fellow said he was friends with DJ Jimmy from middle school. I went out and I met DJ Jimmy at Club Charlie's, and then he took me and Mellow to his crib and he showed us a video of him and DJ Irv doing this where they at type of record. And we also had Tucker doing a where they at type of record uptown at ghost town jimmy was at big man's and charlie's because irv was doing a lot of great mixes like that at ghost town before dj jimmy and t tucker even got any type of notoriety so basically jimmy had issue with some of the things that was going on with the record with tucker or whatever so he was showing us the video that they made on the camcorder to show that he had a lot of creative interest in that record and I was like, okay, well, if you have creative interest in this sound, then you need to drop a record, and I can get you signed, but it has to be under control, it has to be a polished record, it has to have strong arrangements, a chorus, and a hip-hop feel, otherwise, I'm not touching the record. So, that was the agreement, you know, basically, he had to do the record according to what I thought was hip-hop in order for me to even touch the record. So, Jimmy agreed, we did the record, and the rest is history. So it wasn't as if somebody was trying to take something from Tucker or somebody was trying to eat off his skill. DJ Jimmy and T. Tucker are the founding fathers of that bounce sound. 
And that's why we call it Project Music, because both of them have ties with the projects, St. Thomas Project, Calio Projects. So that basically tells you how Bounce started. You had real rappers with connections hooking up with party DJs and artists to create a new subgenre. And DJ Jimmy ended up being very hot, having a national deal, and going on tour for two and a half years and being on Billboard for 27 weeks. So that's how DJ Jimmy got where he was in terms of his music. So DJ Jimmy's version was in fact original. However, T. Tucker's version was technically first, which is why in 1992, we had another response by Silky Slim called the Sister Sister. This was a response to where they at. However, you might not know that if you had only heard DJ Jimmy's version because it mainly responds to the motif found in T. Tucker's version. Although interestingly enough, she does still sample Fresh Go and Miz, but a different part of the record. But the crazy part is, is that's not even the original version of the Silky Slim. This is. Oh no. Not this again. There were so many replies that later in 92, Everlasting Hitman dropped his song, Bounce Baby Bounce, calling out everybody's, everybody's running around town biting Tucker's rap. Right, oh right, oh right, Eventually, oh right. Tucker would even follow it up himself with a part two. But this is some stuff for a whole nother video. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope I was helpful. I would have really liked to show off a lot more of the tapes and original records that these things came from, but unfortunately, a lot of it has become very, very difficult to track down these days. Until the next time, I hope you all have a rocking day, and we'll see you next time on Hip Hop History. Peace.